Bilocation is the phenomenon of being in two places simultaneously where a doppelganger is an apparition or double of a living person. The following four stories are classic true cases of either bilocation or doppelgangers that left the people baffled and in one case extremely frightened. Fleur Conway The following unusual incident happened to a woman in the 1960s. Her name was Fleur Conway, who at the time lived in Newbury Park in northeast London, England. Fleur was with her children in the playroom and happened to glance out of the window onto the backyard. What she witnessed sent chills up her spine when she spotted herself hanging up clothes on the clothesline. She was totally creeped out because she could not understand how she could be in the playroom with her children while at the same time was in the backyard hanging out clothes. She then felt weak and had to sit down and compose herself. How was she able to be in two places at the one time? Reverend Spence Nan. At 1859, the Reverend Spence Nan was walking along a street in Aberdeen, Scotland with a friend. And though it was 8.30 p.m. in the evening, it was not very dark. At the time, he was walking with a colleague and his name was John Chalmers. And he spotted a young woman that he knew whose name was Miss Wallace coming in the opposite direction. Nan had known Miss Wallace for at least 20 years, and at the time, Nan was 26 years old. However, he did not consider them close acquaintances, but he knew her well enough not to pass without saying hello. At the time, she was walking arm in arm with a man, and they came close enough to brush shoulders. They suddenly locked eyes on one another, and she had obviously recognised him. As she was about to greet her, she suddenly vanished. Nan was so taken aback that he went in search of her up and down the street and in various shops, feeling certain that she must have entered one. He could not accept the fact that she disappeared in front of his very eyes. A few months later, he was in London walking down the road and again spotted Miss Wallace, and this time she was walking with his mother and his cousin. This time, he approached her in a tentative manner, hoping she would not vanish again. But on this occasion, she approached him and said, I have a quarrel to settle with you, Mr. Nairn. You completely ignored me in Aberdeen a few weeks ago. Nairn then explained to her that as they had approached each other in Aberdeen, she suddenly vanished. But Miss Wallace said, Well, that is exactly what happened to me. Because as I approached you, you suddenly vanished. She said the man she was walking with was her brother, and at the time she said to her brother, Oh, there's Mr. Nan, I must say hello. They later discussed the dates that they were each in Aberdeen, where it was established that Nan had been in Aberdeen on the 31st of May, where Miss Wallace explained that she had not been there on that date, but that her brother and herself had been there at a much later date at the end of July. But Nan told her that the date she had been in Aberdeen, he had been in Norway. It appears that both had projected an image of one another in exact the same place, but at different times. How on earth could that happen? Gordon Barrows The following incident took place in 1946, when Gordon Barrows had just been discharged from the army. Barrows was visiting his parents in Wyoming, and then attending college at the University of Wyoming in Laramie. The weather at the time was bitterly cold, and Barrows was dressed in a warm jacket and mittens and thick boots when he started his journey in a jeep. He had been driving all day, when at night he suddenly hit a blizzard. As he approached the canyon, he came upon a man who was walking by the side of the road. As the weather conditions were dangerous and extreme, he pulled over in front of the man to offer him a lift. As he got out to offer the man assistance, he was shocked to see that the man was identical to himself and was dressed in a tank core jacket, which was the same as the one he'd worn during wartime, but was not wearing now. The man got in the car and looked across at Barrows and said, You look sleepy, want me to drive? Barrows said that he was tired as he'd been driving all day and accepted the offer and immediately fell asleep in the passenger seat. A short time later, Barrows awoke and found the engine had been turned off and the man was sitting motionless in the driver's seat. Barrows figured that they only had driven about 40 miles from where it picked him up. Barrows offered to drive him into Laramie, but the man declined his offer and then Barrows thanked him for his assistance. The man said, you're welcome, and walked off back to the canyon. When Barrows looked back on the incident, he claimed it all felt like a dreamlike state where strange things often happen, which is how he felt about the encounter. However, Barrow knew that something very strange had happened, as a person could not possibly have walked out into the canyon in a severe blizzard and survive. The fact that the strange man that he picked up was the spitting image of himself 
right down to the uniform that he'd once worn in the war, and it felt it was a projection of himself. Had his doppelganger saved him from falling asleep at the wheel and possibly saved his life? Thomas Lethbridge. The following strange event happened to Thomas Charles Lethbridge, an English archaeologist, parapsychologist and explorer. Lethbridge and his wife were socialising with two friends, and at the time, they were both seated opposite each other. That is, two men were sitting opposite the two women. After the meeting, when Lethbridge was driving home with his wife, she mentioned that the woman looked older than she'd expected, with white hair and wearing a white jumper with a silver Celtic brooch, and that somehow made her look even older. Lethbridge was baffled by his wife's description of the woman, as he remembers her looking very different. The woman he had seen sitting opposite him, next to his wife, was wearing a light chocolate coloured dress and a gold brooch with a yellow stone. Her complexion was smooth and unlined, and her hair was slightly grey. Lethbridge did not doubt his wife's description, but it described someone different and somewhat older than what he had seen. He believes that they were both seeing the same woman together, but had both been caught up in some kind of time slip, where he was seeing her in the past or present, whilst his wife was seeing her in the future. Lethbridge felt then, had there been only one person present, the unusual disparity would never have come to light. They had somehow seen two different visions of the woman at the same time. 